Hey everyone, welcome to a very special Tic Tac Tycle. Why is it special? Number one, this is the beginning of the third year of Tic Tac Tycle. I didn't expect it to go on this long. I really didn't think this far ahead, but it's been so much fun to do, and I didn't realize how much impact it would have. And I'm, I'm grateful to everybody out there who's watched, who's subscribed, and who will watch in the future. Thank you. And the other reason this is special is because I'm doing a product comparison between the Canon Camera Tycle and the Roland Tycle 1. Let me start by saying that this video is not sponsored. I have received no compensation. Nobody has asked me to, hey, hey, can you give us a good review? No, I'm comparing both pieces of equipment that I bought with my own money and have used for a while. I've chosen 13 different categories to do my ratings. But this is the important part. I am not comparing them to each other. I didn't think that would be fair. Instead, I'm either rating them as they are, as their own thing, or how they would compare to an equivalent actual Tycho drum, as it were. All right, let's get started. Let's start off with something easy, price. The Tamar Tycho goes for $450 US, although I do see it on sale every now and then for only $400. Something equivalent to the Tamber Tyco in the Tyco world might be a Shima Tyco, which can range anywhere from $600 to $2,000. So if you figure that your entry level for a Shima is $600 and the Tamber Tyco goes for $450 to $400, that's a pretty good price. The Tyco 1 sells for $1,300 US and I have yet to see it go on sale. An equivalent taiko to this would be an actual oke daiko or okedo, maybe even katsuki okedo, and those range from about one to two thousand dollars. So the thirteen hundred dollar price point is just below the mid range of your average okedo. So comparing the price of these individually to their taiko equivalents means I'm going to rate the timbre taiko ten out of ten, and the taiko one a six out of ten. Next, let's talk about setup. How easy is it to get what you bought out of the box and to start playing on it? With the Tamber Tyco, it was pretty easy. All I had to do was pull it out of the box, plug it into a power source, plug it into some sort of output, in this case a speaker, but also headphones or my computer speakers, and it was good to go. The Tyco 1 took about 40 minutes to put together and I made a, a complete unboxing video, which a lot of you have seen. If not, I will link it below so you can watch it if you haven't or if you just want a refresher. Overall, it was pretty simple to follow the directions to know what to do next, but there was one thing that really, really made it difficult, and that was using the included drum key, this little device here, to tighten the bolts that attached the rods to the heads. And you had to do that for each rod each time, so that was 12 in total. Now, I have pretty large hands, and they're very strong hands, respectively. It was still extremely grueling to get all 12 bolts in. Maybe I put them in too tight, but I was, I was doing it according to the instructions. However, because it was so um, uncomfortable, I really, really never want to take this thing down and have the two heads separate like I might be able to. Or if I'm going on a trip and I want a, a compact arrangement before I put them back together, I never want to do that, which is unfortunate because I think it might be fun to have that kind of versatility. So as far as setup is concerned, Tamber Tycho gets a 10 out of 10, super easy. Tycho 1 gets a 6 out of 10, mainly because of the difficulty with the drum key. Let's talk about design, and this would include things like aesthetics as well as construction and durability. The Tamber Tycho overall has a very nice look. You can get the outer shell in either black or red. The black is probably easier to read the text, although it's not like on the red you're going to get confused about what button does what. There aren't that many buttons, they don't do a lot of things, so generally once you get an idea of what they do, you're never going to forget or get confused. And that's a good thing. The decal on my Tamber Tycho up here especially is starting to bubble. I'll show you a close-up. And really this is purely cosmetic. It's not that big of a factor, but it's worth mentioning. They recommend using smaller, lighter bocce like these. And with bocce like these, you can actually give it a good hit. You don't have to worry about holding back too much. It'll take a nice beating. That being said, because of the lightweight construction, this is pretty much all plastic. If it's not secured in a stand, uh, if it doesn't have something that's grippy, it will move around a little bit. It's not going to hop like crazy, and you can see the example I have. But if you play it for a while on a flat surface, it will move a little bit. Is this a big deal? Not really. It's just worth mentioning.
The display of the timbre Tyco is extremely simple. It's a set of numbers. The numbers will get higher or lower depending on what drum you pick and what size of drum you want. That's it. The timbre Tyco is marketed as a practice pad. And if I want to work things like rhythm, sticking, sequencing, pattern work, I will definitely pull this out. But if I want to hit hard, if I want to practice actually performing something, I'm very likely just to grab my actual good old fashioned dumb drum pad and have a regular size bachi, like a shime bachi or a western drumstick, and I'm able to give a full stroke and a really hard hit without worrying that I'm going to damage my equipment. Which brings me to the outer rim where you would play the ka. It's got a little bit of give, which is nice. It's not attached to the head, which you can tell when you hit it, but it also feels a little, not quite fragile, but definitely not as sturdy as I would like. It's got a hollow thwack sound when I hit it. I feel like if I hit it too hard, it's gonna shatter, it's gonna break. And maybe that's not the case. Maybe it actually is much more durable than I give it credit for. But just from how it sounds and feels, I tend to always be conscious of how hard I'm hitting the cop. The Tyco One has an overall sleek, polished look with a palette of purple and black, and you've got the Mitsu Domoe pattern of white on either head. The rods that hold the heads together have a nice little dip bend thing going on, and when taken as a whole, I think it adds a lot to the look. The control panel that sits on top is held by four essentially heavy-duty rubber bands, and you can see it wiggle when I'm touching it. It wiggles a little bit when you're playing it as well. This really only comes into effect if you're trying to look at the display while you're playing it, otherwise it holds pretty still. The display is pretty good. Uh, it provides plenty of information. You know exactly what you're doing and what function you're on. The only thing I might say is if you take it outside into direct sunlight, it's a lot harder to read, but there's no surprise there. It can be difficult to look at if you're playing it Katsugi Okedo style. It's around your shoulders, it's sideways, and you're trying to look down at, at an angle and adjust things. That can be awkward, but it can be minimized by getting more familiar with the drum. One thing about the buttons on the control panel is that they're very clear, they're very easy to see. Big plus, big minus, home button, up, down, arrow, volume, power, etc. But the only thing, if there is a thing, is that sometimes it's easy to forget. Did, did you want to hit up or down, or did you want to hit plus or minus? Which one makes the value of the menu or the, the instrument greater or lower? It sometimes seems instinctive, and other times I find myself having pushed the wrong button. Uh, not the worst thing in the world, just mildly annoying. In terms of playing the Taiko One, I use the exact same Oketo Bachi that I use on regular Oketo Taiko. I play it just as hard, just as loud as I would with a regular drum. The Ka, similar to some reservations on the uh, Tambor Taiko, it's not as delicate, but I do hold back a little bit, partially because it's plastic, but also because it's got more of an angle, more of a corner than the roundness of the Tambor Tyco, and I'm a little worried when I play with lighter wood, if I hit it too hard, that the wood will dent, just like a regular drum. So for design, I'm gonna give the Tambor Tyco a seven, and the Tyco one a nine. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about the different sounds that you can make on these, starting with the quantity of sounds. How many sounds can you get from both devices? The Tambor Tyco comes with eight preloaded sounds. You get two Nagado or Chudaiko, you get two okedo, you get one shime, over here is one odaiko, and this one in between the shime and odaiko is essentially two more okedo. I would say overall you get four different okedo, and they're not just different sounds, but also different sort of construction. It's a nice range of okedo sounds. It's a nice range of sounds overall. For the taiko one, you get over 100 sounds preloaded. I actually did a video on a lot of the sounds that you can make, uh, not all of them, because that would have been an enormously long video, but I will also link that video down below as well. I'm going to give the Tambor Tyco a 7, and the Tyco 1 gets a 10 plus. There is no number higher than 10 for this rating, but it's worth noting that you get a ton of sounds for the Tyco 1. Let's get into the sound quality. In other words, how do the sounds sound? Unfortunately, I was not able to get the Tambor Tyco to work with my drum amp. I don't know why. I can hear something, but it's very muffled, very far away. So instead, I have it coming out through my speaker up top. Tyco 1 will be coming out of the drum amp here. 
because of that, it's not really going to sound like a fair comparison. If both sounds were coming out of the drum amps, you would get a better idea. But even with that, the ratings that I'm giving come from what these sound like with headphones on. Headphones are the best way to really hear how good both of these sound. I will also be doing comparison sounds like the Shime here to the Shime here, the Odaiko here to the Odaiko here, just to give you a general idea of how they compare. But again, I'm not rating them on how they compare to each other. First up is the Nagado, the sort of generic Taiko sound that you might be looking for. Number 42 on the Tambor Taiko and number two on the Taiko one. One thing you might notice right away is that the attack of the Tambor Taiko is much louder than the attack on the Taiko 1. You wind up hearing the strike sometimes even louder than the output. Again, the speaker is not the best way to hear the Tambor Taiko, but you do hear the attack much more loudly. Next up is the Shime Taiko, which is number 33 on the Tambor Taiko, setting number 3 on the Taiko 1. Then we're going to use the Oketo number 48, which is the smaller of the two basic Oketo on the Tambor Taiko and Oketo on the Taiko 1, which is setting 01, the default sound. And finally, Old Taiko, which is the big button over here, number 12 on the Tambor Taiko, and setting number 4 on the Taiko 1. So for sound quality, I'm going to rate the Tambor Taiko 7, the Taiko 1 gets a 10. Okay, let's talk next about features. They make sounds okay, but what else can you do with them? The Tambor Taiko does not have a lot of other features. You can plug in another source of sound, maybe uh, a video or MP3 or uh, a metronome so that you can hear something while you're playing along and you can hear what you're playing at the same time, but that's about it. And this is an area where the Taiko 1 really shines. You have something like Bluetooth, but it's worth mentioning you can't output to Bluetooth. You can only have something coming in if you wanted to be playing along and wanted to hear what you're playing along to through, say, uh, headphones. You have a metronome, but you can pick what sound the metronome is, like a clave or a shime or vocals. You have a ji-uchi feature, which is similar to a metronome, but you're picking a taiko pattern, like uh, don suku don don or dongo or don doko different instruments as well. There's a rhythm trainer on here. Um, you can store sounds that you put in. There's, there's just a ton of things that most people, including myself, are not gonna be using, but they are there and they're worth mentioning. So for features, the Tambor Taiko gets a five and the Taiko one gets a 10. Knowing the features is important, but it's also important to know how easy they are to use. If you have the most impressive piece of equipment but you don't know how to use it or it's very difficult to do what you want to do, then those features aren't really helpful. The Tambor Taiko, maybe due to the lack of features it has, is extremely easy to figure out. Like I said before, you push a button and then you go up or down to determine the size of the diameter of the drum, which essentially will make it a deeper sound or a, a tighter sound. And it's really hard to mess up or, oh, which, which instrument was I using? Because there's only eight of them and you have two volume knobs. The power button is almost not even needed because once you plug it into a power source, it turns on. You only would use it if you wanted to turn the power off while it was plugged in for some reason. Like I mentioned earlier, the Taiko 1 has a ton of features, but that can also work against it sometimes in terms of this category of ease of use. If you're trying to find a specific sound bank, you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, while your head is turning and you're looking down because the control panel is sideways and if you're carrying it, you have to hold your head a specific position to see it. 
If you're playing it outdoors, you're not going to see the LCD display very cleanly. Um, going through the menu, the menu controls aren't difficult, but again, looking sideways and trying to figure out what it is you want to do, there is a learning curve. Eventually, you can get familiar or you can even program it to have a specific customized sound bank come up at the touch of a button, but that's definitely not easy to use. So for ease of use, the Tembra Tyco gets a 10, the Tyco 1 gets a 7. When it comes to actual regular Tyco, dynamics is pretty straightforward. The harder I hit the drum, the louder the note gets, and of course vice versa. With electronic drums, it's a little bit different. I'll try to explain it as best I can, as best as I understand it. When you play at a certain volume, you get a certain note. The note will not change to the next program note, which is louder, until you hit a certain threshold. Where that threshold is, is determined by the software, by the hardware, by the manufacturer. So you won't have an infinite amount of different thresholds as you would on a regular Tyco. You would have however many are programmed in. For the Tamper Tyco, generally, with my headphones on, I can count about four different thresholds. Soft, medium soft, medium loud, and loud. With the rim, I, depending on the instrument picked, I can get one to two different thresholds, sort of a, just soft and loud. I'm gonna use number 42, the default Nagato sound. Let's see if it comes across through the video coming out of the speaker. For the Tycho 1, I heard about six to eight different levels of thresholds on the head and about three to four on the rim. I'm going to use a comparable sound to the uh, Timber Tycho setting number two, Magado. The rating I'm giving these, again, is based on, say, using an actual Tycho. I'm not comparing them to each other. And with that, I give the Tamper Tyco 6 for dynamics, and the Tyco 1 gets a 9. A really interesting category, at least I think so, is responsiveness, which differs from dynamics. Dynamics says there are thresholds of sounds where you start to hear the next sound and the next sound. How much force do I need to add before I hear the next and next and next sound? Responsiveness wants to know at what level can I play before I start to hear a sound. In other words, where is that minimum threshold? The best way to show it is just to do it. What you're noticing is I'm hitting the drum. You can hear the attack, but it's not loud enough often to register a note that the speaker will play. Now, I'm playing very, very quietly, so this isn't a big deal, but if you're trying to compose or if you're trying to play very, very lightly, you may not hear yourself at all. Let's do this with the cough now. This is my biggest gripe with the Tamper Tyco. You cannot play a quiet ka. If I want to play a quiet ka, I have to do recording and then some kind of post-production to lower the volume of my ka, which isn't the end of the world, but it's pretty annoying, especially when I have to separate a track out rather than being able to play it all at once. In the manual, which is found online, it says that you have to play this loud because otherwise the ka will actually trigger the drum sound instead. So it's a known feature, not a bug. But you know what? I do find it really annoying. Let's try this with a Tycho 1. I've switched to a different sound, which will be much easier to hear at quiet volume. I have to play really quiet if I don't want to make a sound. So that's a pretty good sign. Let's see what happens with the ka. It does start to register on the ka after a little bit of force. Um, I can get away with playing it kind of quietly before it picks up, 
but it's generally pretty responsive. So in this category, I'm giving the Tempur Tyco 4 and the Tyco 1 an 8. Now, what if you want to take this outside to the park or to the beach? How portable are either of these? It's worth mentioning that both of these need some way to output sound. You either need to have a speaker or an amp or headphones, regardless of which one you pick. For the Tamer Tyco, it's worth mentioning that you have to have an external power source. You have to plug it into something, whether it's a power brick or a computer or something similar, but it's extremely lightweight. It's, uh, I believe, 2.2 pounds or just about one kilogram. So you can toss everything into a backpack and you're good to go. The Tyco One is essentially an Oketo, and it weighs like an Oketo weighs. It's about, uh, it's just under 10 pounds, I believe, around 4.5 kilograms. However, while you can bring an external power source, you can also use AA batteries. I think eight AA batteries, which in the manual says up to five hours of battery life. So I don't normally compare these. I'm not, again, I'm not comparing them for score, but it's worth mentioning external power source, lightweight, not so light, but you can use batteries. And I'm gonna give the Tamper Tyco a 10, Tyco One an eight. Next up is versatility. What can you do with either of these? The Tamper Tyco is marketed as a practice pad and that's where it shines. But I've made a couple of videos on my channel that I will loosely call performance videos where I show how I can utilize the Tamper Tyco in different ways and I'll link those videos below. However, I wouldn't necessarily take this to a performance unless it was something very unique or very special. I'm pretty much gonna use this just to practice on. The Taiko One, you can have it set up as an Oketo, uh, maybe a Katsugi Oketo if you don't wanna put it in a stand. You can separate the heads and have two different playing surfaces. Right off the bat, that's a lot of versatility. And because it's built like an Oketo, if I saw it on a stage in a stand or worn on a strap, I wouldn't think twice about it. It wouldn't look too out of place. So I would be comfortable using the Tyco One in an actual performance. So for versatility, the Tamber Tyco gets a six, the Tyco One gets a 10. Now I would like to talk to you about the MIDI capabilities of both of these, but I can't. And I think it's more a me problem than it is the fault of either one of these. I've tried two different computers, two different digital audio workstations and I just can't get anything to work the way I want it to. But I will say one thing, when I plug the Tyco One into my computer and the digital audio workstation is running, it recognizes the Tyco One exists. I cannot get the Tamper Tyco to be acknowledged as even existing when I plugged it in. It may not be a factor. Again, I'm not blaming the equipment, but it also means I can't compare the two, I can't rate the two, so this is sort of a, a null category but I did want to mention it. Our last category is value, and value differs from price. Price is simply the monetary amount that you're paying, and value is the worth to you, or in this case, to me. You can think of it as features divided by cost, or comparing each of these to their Tyco equivalents, which would be the Oketo for the Tyco One, and the Shima Daiko for the Tamper Tyco. And I give value score of eight to the Tamper Tyco, and 10 to the Tyco One. We're finally at the summary, which is what you've all been waiting for patiently, thank you very much. But before I roll out the final numbers and list all of the individual categories side by side, I need to say two very important things. Number one is that both of these are totally worth it. I could easily make a sales pitch on the Tamper Tyco, on the Tyco One, and I know I could tell you the strengths and the benefits and the advantages of each and, and do a really good job because they're both really good pieces of equipment. And the second is the adage, apples to oranges. But in this case, I'm saying bicycles to motorcycles because both of those have generally the same shape. You get the two wheels, you get a frame, you sit on the frame and you go. Which one is better for you depends on your circumstances, which sometimes change. If you wanna go fast, you want a motorcycle. If you have a long commute, you want a motorcycle. If you're going up a mountain or you've got hilly terrain, you probably want a motorcycle. But you can't really take a motorcycle through a park or a nature trail. You want a bicycle. Or let's say you're tired of paying for gas and it's getting more expensive. You want a bicycle. It doesn't mean that you can't have both of them, but for some people, one or the other is way better suited and for others, both are gonna be great. 
Your needs determine which one is best for you. All right, here are the final numbers, but remember, these are subjective numbers through my lens. Both of these are winners. All right, here are the side-by-side -side numbers and the grand total, but remember, the numbers are less important than how well any one of these addresses your particular needs. Can I get a drum roll? Anyone? The Tambor Tyco gets a 90, which is an average of 7.5. The Tyco 1 gets 103, with an average of 8.58. I really enjoyed making this video, but it was a lot of work. It was an idea I had in my head for some time, and it just seemed like the right time to do it. Usually, I will ask people to leave comments on a video, but for this one, I really, really would appreciate if people liked what I said, agreed with my experiences, disagreed with my experiences especially. Go ahead and leave those comments below. Help people who are considering getting one or the other or both for years to come with your experiences and your feedback added to mine. Oh, and don't forget, leave me a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And until next time, Keep on practicing and be well.